special meeting of June 21st. Again, we're pleased to, to be here today. And this is a um, economic business roundtable discussion that uh, City Manager John Zerlake usually has with businesses, so I think once a month. Yes, ma'am. And the City Council asked if they could be included because, of course, we want to uh, get input uh, from the business community, too. So that's why we're here today. So, Mr. Z I will have a uh, roll call. Mayor Louise Schilling? Here. Councilwoman Beltramini? Councilman Fleming? Here. Councilman Howerlack? Mayor Pro Tem Kerwin? Here. Councilwoman McGinnis? Here. And Councilman Slater? Here. We could excuse Councilwoman Robin Beltramini now. She's still out of the um, county. I don't know about Councilman Howerlack, so should we wait? Mayor, it would be appropriate to uh, excuse members at the next meeting. Okay. Have that on there. All right, good. Okay, thank you. It's always included here, though. All right, so Mr. Zerlag, you want to begin? Sure, I'll just begin with a very uh, brief uh, introduction. Uh, first of all, indicate uh, what happened here, what was the impotence for the roundtable discussions, and that is that... Hi, uh, right. nice to see you. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good to see you again. Good morning. Hi, William. Sorry, I'm late. Hey, Tom. And that is, we just started, Tom. Good. Uh, and Good. The, and, uh, but the reason that uh, city management initiated uh, a business roundtable discussion uh, is similar to what Oakland County does on a smaller scale. Uh, Oakland County, through Brooks Patterson, also has uh, business roundtable discussions with subgroups. And we're not really stealing uh, uh, the term business roundtable because I understand when Mr. Patterson was an intern, he actually worked for King Arthur who had the initial <laughs> roundtable discussions. And so um, we have an extension of that. And the sole purpose of our roundtable discussions is to let our businesses know that if they're not residents and don't have a vote, they have a voice in the community. And our primary objective is to have a municipality where roughly half the tax base consists of uh, commercial, industrial, personal property uh, components, and the other half is, is residential. And we wanted to get a sense from the businesses why they came to Troy, what they like about Troy, and what Troy could do better, as well as what their long-term vision is for the city of Troy. We've met now about eight times over the past uh, nine months, and the group in front of you is a subset of the group that we've already uh, had meetings with. We give periodic updates on what's going on. We found them very helpful and enlightening, and they've made some good recommendations, uh, many of which we have uh, incorporated and in, in staff provides you with updates periodically on what's going on. That's essentially the formality of, of our agenda. Um, we normally meet from 8 to 9.30, and we always have to cut the meeting short because the discussions are, are so lively. And uh, after the introductions, I more or less take a back seat and let the uh, business participants essentially run the meeting to take their input. And we always start with an introduction of the folks that are uh, invited uh, in terms of uh, what they do and uh, what their goals are. So if we could okay. have that so pattern. Should we begin here or here? Which Go ahead. Right. Start? Oh, I'm Nancy, Nancy? Negotian. And my family's had a business in Troy since 1966. Um, at one time, we owned three buildings. We own two buildings right now. We have two manufacturing companies. One makes automation for stamping presses, and the other makes plastic consumer household goods. We don't manufacture the plastic in Troy, but we do everything else um, associated with that. I have lived in Troy the first nine years of my life when Troy had a Birmingham mailing address. And then when my husband and I got married, we've lived the last 27 years in Troy. So my children are graduates of Troy schools and pretty pretty established in the community. Okay. Councilman Martin Howlack is here with us. And now we have uh, Robert Pelichek. I'm, I'm president of uh, Heller Machine Tool. Heller is a uh, special machine tool company. We make CNC machines, and we also do uh, systems and application for high production metal cutting with, with the CNC machines. For instance, uh, motor blocks, cylinder heads, <coughs> we're the biggest in the world on uh, diesel engines, large diesel engines. Um, I've been with the operation now about five years. 
the operation was in question when I first started, but we built it up from a $30 million business to a $250 million business. And we are doing some improvements to our building and we have a plan to expand that building to maybe double it. Uh, and uh, I mean, I have ran other machine tool companies. I like Troy. <laughs> You won't hear anything bad from me other than your snow removal sucks, but <laughs> <laughs> excuse me. But, uh, uh, but other than that, I, I mean, I think Troy is a great, great location. It's uh, get to the airport. Well, you can't get to the airport quick from anywhere now, but but you can get quicker here, and uh, uh, it's very easy to uh, attract people to work in the Troy area. Okay, and we have Councilman Wade Fleming who is with us, and Neil. Good morning, Neil Doshi. Good morning. Thank you for the invite. Appreciate it. Uh, the Doshi Group has been in Troy for 20 years now. Um, Family-owned business. We started as architects and engineers, and we've evolved into doing uh, construction management, product manufacturing, as well as uh, specialized staffing. Um, we we own a facility in Troy, and we own a facility in Southfield. We run our headquarters out of our, our Troy office. Um, I think one of the the big components for us staying in Troy and, and growing our, our Troy headquarters is the, the talent. The talent pool within the city of Troy. That's probably the, the biggest staying point. Is there's a lot of good talent, not only from you know a college level, but actually from an internship level in the high school, where we give, we try to give kids the opportunity each summer to come in and work for us. Um, some paid, some non-paid, depending on the job. So that's probably our, our the biggest leverage we have with the city of Troy. Thank you, and city steward, community affairs director, and Lori Bloom, our city attorney, Mark Miller services, which you all know, because he's probably all helped your, each of your companies, and uh, Councilman Dane Slater, and... Tom, Tom Perry. Yes. Hi, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? So, um, just like Nancy, um, I'm also working, I work for a company that's been headquartered in Troy for, for many years, but I also live, live in Troy, and I actually, on the way over here, got very depressed because I tried to figure out how long I've been here. Uh, I've been I've been a resident of Troy for about 33 years, um, and and so as long as I thought, I've had two kids. They've gone through the Troy school system. Uh, we couldn't be happier. They did. A, uh, they both graduated. Uh, really, you know, felt they were well prepared for college. And it's very important to us. And I think one of the reasons we we moved to Troy was because of the city services and because of the school systems. And it was it was very well worth it. Um, I worked. Uh, I worked for a company called Altair Engineering. It's been in business for 25 years. Um, I've been there for about 18. And most of the 25 years have been in Troy. Um, it's a kind of a strange business. Um, it's unique. Uh, we started out doing uh, uh, simulation for engineering services and, and doing services for that. It kind of morphed into doing the software itself. And so we, the main component of our business now is doing so selling software throughout the world, uh, 15 subsidiaries um, throughout the world. Uh, the headquarters is here, a lot of our software development is here in Troy, so we have the same issue. We have to try and attract people here to Troy. Um, we have like 1,500 people worldwide, uh, 1,600 probably, and the people that work out of the Troy office, there's about 587, but of those 587, there's 86 families that live in Troy. So that's like times three is 250 people that, that are, 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 are Troy residents. And it's very important to us. So it's very important to us. We're, we're attracting, um, it's not as easy for us. We're attracting uh, really qualified software developers from the East Coast and from the West Coast. Like why would you want to move to, to Detroit, to Michigan? And so we have a big uh, issue to try and attract people to come to Troy. Um, once they get, once we get them here, and once they, you know, they're here, they really love it. Uh, but it's hard to do, to do that, and so we really spend a lot of time trying to attract uh, people. Our headquarters building is is very nice, and it's it's. Uh, uh, but we're competing with the West Coast and the East Coast. It's tough. Okay, thank you. And Councilman Maury McGinnis is here, and Alan Curler. <coughs> Alan? Yeah. Well, uh, well, thanks for inviting me. I appreciate it, and. Uh, I was thinking about this and listening to everybody chat. First off, I feel that uh, 
it really is a critical move and a very, very strong signal. And the question, as you'll hear from my later comments, is that how you build on this is that, uh, you know, I've always, well, probably all of you, you've always heard me talk about Charlotte, which we've been doing things for almost 20 years. And the unique thing I found about Charlotte is, and, and I really think this is really the strongest I've ever seen in my career around developing around the country, is that the business community and the elected officials in the administration of City Hall were like one. I mean, I, I just can't, it just astounds me uh, how smooth things can go there. And, uh, and frankly, I think you're the first community that I'm experiencing in the state of Michigan where I see the, the beginning of this. And uh, I think it, I would encourage you to keep doing it. So this is a wonderful dialogue. Uh, I, I realized here that my, I first started actively developing it, like in the 83, maybe sooner. So I've done primarily office buildings, but uh, <clears throat> industrial and retail and so on. But uh, uh, also uh, I started out in the paving business as a kid in the 60s. And I actually was work, did work asphalt paving at the Somerset Apartments when they were built. <laughs> so I, yeah, I remember bidding the work back then. Wow. So I've seen a little bit of change around here. Worked with Alan Rosenfeld, bought what I refer to as cornfields. And of course the big challenge that you're really dealing with now is that, uh, and I think you truly are embracing it, uh, is the, uh, uh, you're an infill community. And if in, uh, I've spent a lot of time uh, in the city of Detroit, chaired Central Business District Association, and I saw what the, I experienced what the impediments were in development and just job creation. And uh, uh, you really have to change your mind. And I will, the next thing I want to say is that, I mean, I've loved working with the mayor at the DDA, John and Mark and Lori and Cindy and all the other staff. I mean, it's been amazing uh, if you work with a vision and how you have enhanced uh, the process, the administrative aspects. You know, you, you're, you're really hard moving the needle, and uh, it's not over with. But I, I'm really, uh, you should be proud of that. So um, that's a little bit of an introduction, right? That's okay. not too much. And we have uh, Mayor Pro Tem, Mayor Kerwin, with us, and of course I'm the, the mayor. And so we're back to Mr. Zerleg. Um, where do we go from here? And I should. Uh, tell people that are here in case they're not aware, but when we have a special meeting, it's always shown on cable mm -hmm. uh, to the residents. And so it was important that you give an introduction for those of you that don't know right. uh, you or don't know your company. Uh, and so I think that's important for everyone. Uh, if I can, Mary, I did not mention them with Kirko Development and Kirko Management. <laughs> <laughs> Do you own any property in the, <laughs> yeah. the street that yeah. you want to The Columbia Center is one of our projects, yep. Yeah. So. Yeah. And maybe we'd like to hear about the patents at Altair, too. Yeah. So quite a bit of development. Okay. Well, we had uh, one area that was brought up. Uh, we can't promise you no snow this winter. <laughs> <laughs> but. We probably could say it won't be the second snowiest February ever in Michigan because I doubt that that happens two years in a row mm -hmm. uh, around uh, that uh, is an area that we're uh, addressing and going to be addressing more about how we're going to handle the, uh, the snow situation in the winter. As you know, in Michigan, they can be uh, tricky. We can have a mild winter or we can have a heavy snow winter, so it does vary. How about the um, roads in general in each of the areas where your businesses are located? Um, three of you are on Big Beaver, and um, I'm not sure, Neil, where yours is? That's off of Crooks. That's, okay. um, you know, we're like Charlie's Crab and Luciano. It's right across the opposite side, just north of Longwood, where 75 and Crooks is. Right, okay. Uh, it's been there for 12, 13 years. Okay. So. Was that a Becker building before? That was. Uh -huh. right. yeah. um, and I did notice Oakland County's been out on Crooks Road fixing some of the um, they fixed dips the, in the road. They fixed the same little cross yes. street four years in a row now. Right. No. Yes. <laughs> so, I, no, the roads from where we're at, they're not too bad. They're, I don't know, I mean, because we're literally right off 75, so they're, if they're not shoveling 75, there's going to be, you know, massive, massive uproars. Okay. And, and how about you, Bob? Um, we're on uh, your business. Equity Drive, and yes. that's a private road. I 
be more than glad to give it to the city if you want it. <laughs> um, but uh, but you don't want it, so uh, so we maintain it the best we can. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, I know I'm a big beaver, right? and the same potholes develop all the time yeah. um, right in front of my business. I mean, I have a hundred employees, and and we get a lot of heavy trucks going down a little. Um, two-lane road, daily road, so um, we get quite a few potholes, and um, we've had to, out of our own pocket, replace the approaches several times. Last year, the city um, came and redid the curbs on daily that weren't that old. I don't know why they decayed on one side. They literally crumbled. So, um, but where Neil is, I mean, I go by I-75 and Crooks in corporate all the time and I'm telling you that's the worst intersection in Troy and they just did something on corporate drive that they you know they they saw and then they put down tar and then they put down some kind of very fine gravel it's disgraceful that's that's not was that done by the county did you I don't see know who did it white truck. trucks there the white the, trucks the on a Saturday year. night yeah that's the fourth year they've oh, done that yeah. I don't know what and they, the I don't know. and they literally closed that set well yeah I mean that's where I have to go through to go to 5:30 mass on Saturday night and <laughs> I'm waving at these guys going what the heck are you doing this doesn't even make sense but that corporate drive intersection in I-75 it's dangerous it's so bad and I don't know whose responsibility that Anybody else want to make it? Uh, again, Altair Engineering. We we have a, our headquarters is on Big Beaver and, and John R. And it, it seems to be fine. Um, this last year was was rough. Uh, it took a longer to longer period of time to get things cleared from the snow. Back, back to Robert's issue. And I've noticed the uh, same thing with our residents is it's taking longer. It's you know usually you know last year and maybe because because we had a lot of snow in February, but last before last last before last in the winter it seemed like we had somebody out there quite frequently you know very quickly and it took more like uh, a day or two and there was a couple snowstorms where they didn't even come out I mean it wasn't deep enough um, we also have a, a we all we just bought a new business a new building on a Dusco court on 15 and um, I'll, I'll tell you how that goes later I haven't been there that long to find out um, that's the issue with the patents. I can talk about it later if you want to. How, um, how about the quality of the roads, uh, the surface? Um, other than the small things, I think it's reasonably fine. Smart zone. Right, right. So we are in the I'm just trying to get a feel from everybody. I, I, I think in general, I mean, if you were to take the last 10, 12 winters, I mean, this winter was kind of an anomaly. I think even if, you know, let's say budgeting wasn't a problem for, you know, all of, all of Michigan, you know, including Troy. I don't think snow removal, snow shoveling would be that big of an issue. I think you had, like you said, the second worst February in, in the history of Michigan or something. I, mean, I, I don't think it would have, I just don't think you can prepare yourself for winters like that. You can do a, a decent job and it was fine. I don't, I think even, I drive through Troy and I drive all around the city of Troy on a daily basis and I thought the roads were, they're comparable if you go into Birmingham, if you go into Southfield, if you go into, you know, any major city in Southeast, I think Sterling Heights, I think they were all fairly comparable. I think that you get an anomaly like this and it just gets accentuated. So, you know, maybe we, you can tell us, or somebody can tell us, maybe Mark can tell us, um, you know, what, what kinds of difficulties, I know we're all having difficulties in the, in the, in the, you know, the economic situation, but what can we expect? What are the issues? You know, are, is there a lot of pullback on city services? I know there's a big controversy in the library. Can you can somebody give us a summary of, of where we stand and, and, and what, we, what to expect? Well, you know, we had the, the major road fund and then we have the local road fund and then we, we have services that we deliver year round and then some that are seasonal. Uh, and so my question was mainly in general rather than specifically to snow, but of course we can address that too. I think Alan wanted to say something. Yeah, uh, I, I, uh, t I take a little different perspective. Number one, the anomalies of snowstorm doesn't bother me. I mean, number one. You're in I'm, Charlotte then. Well, no, I'm right here. I'm right here. But uh, I drove it. I was on that on cloud snow, but that's right okay. Right. Yeah, <laughs> every day. And uh, uh, so, it, you know, those idiosyncrasies, you know, I, I, don't, I just don't have an issue with. Uh, 
I think that uh, you know the infrastructure. I mean, it, I admire the quality of the equipment that you invest in. It appears to me, I, you know, I haven't driven any of them, but I grew up around this stuff, and it looks like you got quality equipment, so you're investing in good hardware. Uh, now, uh, I take a different view about all this, and just for background, I, I chair the Oakland County Business Roundtable Transportation Committee, and I have for like 13 years. So I live with the financial road issue for the county, the state and been involved is with legislation in Lansing, as a matter of fact, this new law. Uh, there is a serious, serious problem. And this is not just naysaying. I'm going to tell you, there, there's, there are serious uh, shortfalls of money, and there is no source for the money. It's at least $2 billion within the county in the next 10 years. And, uh, and uh, the, the, what the community is going to be confronted with long term, and I, these are, I think, important points to make is that uh, you're going to have to really uh, make sure that roads and infrastructure is on your priority list. It is not something you can just oh, get away with like you know, like this patch and you know what that's macadam. That is really nothing but that's a, the consequence of no money not and and so they're just filling the chuck hole. That's all they're doing and that is not a solution. That is just just trying to get away with a lawsuit. Um, but uh, I got to tell you that there's a new bill that wants well, some time. I mean, if I'm with you folks again, I'd be happy to spend some t mechanical time with the detail. There's a new bill called, I think it's Public Act 250, which is also known as the PIF. And uh, by the way, your your leadership here, your administration has helped me. You know, I was involved in develop, developing that bill. They've advised me, and you, you were my sounding board. So um, you had a new bill that creates a new funding source. So when the companies come in. If they're going to build an in-desk goal and they're going to put new capital, it's a means that you could frankly come up with a new economic means for uh, helping help deal with infrastructure. So uh, that PIF or the uh, Public Act 250, I think it is. So at any rate, uh, but let me tell you the reality of the situation. Uh, as a developer, you know, we work on new projects and I deal with CEOs every, know, almost every day of my life because that's where we get our business from. And in this world now, we're dealing with people from around the world. They have options. Mm -hmm. And they literally, truly do have all the options in the world with telecommunications, and, and we all know that. Well, I gotta tell you, the infrastructure and first impressions still have an impact. Mm -hmm. uh, Columbia Center, fortunately, is you know almost 90% leased in a market where office is 35% vacant. Why is that? And you know, because maybe we're giving a little more value, we're doing things so that people feel good and we help the businesses. In our mission there is that we want to make sure that our people we do business with, their businesses are very well presented so their customers, clients, and employees, or attracting employees, are feel very positive about it. And this is where I want to be. And I've had literally people say that. But here's the bottom line. I was in, uh, in uh, Tampa yesterday, Tampa, St. Pete, all day, driving all day long. And I tell you, it made me sick. And I see it, and I see it in the Carolinas. I see it in Texas. I see it in Florida. And you, in the road conditions, if you're a decision maker and you're trying to figure out where to put a company, folks, I mean, tr trust me, this these road conditions uh, is an impactful situation. If you're going to create a new business and you're going to spend 50 million, 100 million, spend 20, 30 years. You, you know, you're looking for a vibrant, well-organized machine. And that curb appeal, you're an international company. I mean, get it, your people can be anywhere in the world. And it, it, all this counts. I'm going to tell you, it counts. I, was, I, was, I actually literally thought about it driving yesterday. It was discouraging because the road conditions were so supreme. Now, I know they don't have winter, so they, it's not quite as challenging. But nevertheless, it's a commitment. And I, my last comment, and this is for you folks to take away, is it uh, the state of Michigan's expenditures per, per uh, capita is the 44th in the nation. Mm -hmm. 44th in expenditures per capita. And, and we've been there for like 40 years. So what I'm saying to you is that if roads have not been a cultural priority in the leadership of the state of Michigan, whether it's in the municipality or the state, and that's something you folks need to think about. You want to be a differentiator? You've got to figure out how to deal with roads. I mean, I, I hate to tell you. You know, I travel from 36 in Quinder to Quinder to work every day. 
<coughs> well, I get to travel through a couple of cities and, and the snow removal is better in other cities than it is here because when I get to Troy you can almost put a sign up okay because it, it's not plowed <coughs> and when my people can't get to work or can't get home at night then I got a problem and I agree with you I was in Texas last week the roads are fantastic yeah um, uh, Germany you never see bumps in the road but they use a blacktop that I understand we experimented with on 375, <coughs> well, which is still holding up. Well, you, you see, it's not a question of not how, knowing how to do it. Yeah. It's a question of money. I mean, you, you know, if you, you, can double the, you can double the spec on the road, you know, and, but you, instead of doing uh, uh, a mile road, you're going to do a half a mile road. <coughs> That's the problem. And, and, I, and I work with them, Dot, and I grew up in that business. So I, I, I like to think I know a little bit about it, and it's all about specs. If you want it, if you want it to last, uh, you just have to put more money in it per mile, and and that's what I think the road commissions and your DPW and in mm -hmm. uh, the state have got to deal with. Alan, does it go any further to like um, the sanitary sewers and the because we have such a high water table in Troy, right? And I notice even even in our lots, we've had to put underground right. pumps. Mm -hmm. to get water out and right. we have many storage buildings that are literally floating they go up and they go down yeah, yeah. and and i don't know if that's been properly <coughs> well the, uh the groundwater is, and the soils in the state or in the city are not not <coughs> very good they're they're really nasty I mean, when we did columbia center we had to do a lot of special stuff for foundations big time and uh, but that that's okay you know that's a site specific it really comes down to your contractor and your engineers or developer is that they should get them out of the you know kind of a mantra is get it out of the ground right that means water drainage good foundations infrastructure so that the water gets away from your parking lot underneath your parking lot uh, but that's i don't consider that a state response or city responsibility it's maybe engineering wise you can try to push the envelope with designers but you know we're talking about Troy. It isn't just Troy. It's the roads everywhere. Right. Yeah. Uh, it, I mean, it yeah. seems like they're just not holding up very well. There's no money. They're not doing. They don't have a budget. No. I just wonder if we're making the right choice in the type of roads we put in. Is what I'm no. questioning. Uh, maybe a road that seals itself better from the salt and the erosion. Uh, you know. I mean, I'm, in, I'm not in construction, but uh, uh, I mean roads that I'm not that old. But roads that I know that they just put them in and we're redoing them again. And we have a tendency to take them right down to the ground and go back up again. Right. Um, right. That's what you have to do. But, uh, I mean, that's a long debate. I mean, there are situations like 275 where nobody, they discovered that the, the chemistry of the concrete was bad. I don't know right. if you remember that. You maybe picked up a little bit in the news. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, they we put it in a new 275 and the concrete failed. Well, it was a chemical reaction within the concrete. See? So things do happen. But by and large, uh, you, if you have good inspections, you know, you just need more money, or you juice up, you got to beef up your spec. I mean, instead of going, to, you know, eight inches of concrete, you go to 12 inches. Instead of one foot of aggregate, you do like in Germany, where they put three feet of aggregate. If you go, you go see a new road section going in in Germany, and you got three, four feet of aggregate underneath. Yeah. Okay. You so know, you never see road problems in Germany. I know. That's the. Uh, does the chamber have a committee that addresses road issues specifically, or is it in general? And have they been helpful I in? Well, I don't think the chamber has. A okay, I'm not aware of that. How about um, the Michigan Chamber well, of Commerce? Are they yeah. addressing? Because you know, every time something comes up about how to fund roads mm -hmm. in general, then there's this kickback yeah. about, you know, people don't want to pay more. Well, that's it. How, how has that been addressed like, at that well, level? I, I mean, I have you years know? at this, okay, and I, I really apologize. Uh, I don't want to, you know, be talking too much here, but this is really in my sandbox. Uh, <laughs> let, you know, our round table, we spent, uh, what, three, four years, we identified the problems, two billion a year, with no source. And if you saw the map, with the solution that we had, you'd be astounded at road improvements in the county. Uh, so what we came up with is we had a, a uh, what we we'll call the local options. Now this is the bitter pill, but and, uh, and the, the local options is a way to, to solve, create $150 million of cash, not debt, not borrowed money, right? It's cash. Yeah, every year for 10 years with a sunset provision 
And we had five various things between sales tax and some taxes, moderate taxes. But you know what the net effect is? And I'm just getting to the right bottom line. If the local options were adopted in Oakland County and you created $150 million a year of additional cash, it would be $11 per month per citizen. I'm telling you, we did this, all this work, all this research, all the numbers. $11 per month per citizen to generate $150 million of cash of work that's just not going to happen. So the bottom line is, is until it gets more acute and more serious, and then maybe sometimes our community or leaders, I know it's not for me to say where it's going to, the tough decision is going to be made, but until it gets worse, I don't think it's going to change because people won't put up the money. Or find it someplace, which nobody. Do you have a question? I do. Just in a different area or the same area? Just a clarification, because we talk about roads. Yeah. And I know that the mayor, next, in August, we're going to have a study session devoted to talking about roads and some of the situations that you mentioned, because we realize that our policies impact that. But one thing that we always talk about is when we partner, Alan, to do a tri-county and we're using shared funds, it's really the county specs that override whatever we want to do. And those do influence some of those roads and the way that they were. Would you agree? Absolutely. In fact, most people are unaware that the preponderant of major roads in Troy are county roads. And Mark, why don't you recite the city major roads that we have? It's easier to do the city major roads because there's less of them. Waddles, Rochester, and Coolidge. All the other major roads are county roads. And in the history of Troy, when Troy was developing and had budgets where our revenues exceeded our expenditures, we were able to have an excellent street system. In Troy, historically, we had spent more money improving county roads than the county spent on improving county roads. Unfortunately, we no longer have the funds to do that. We're going to concentrate on city major roads and, as Mary mentioned, try to partner with the county when we can to leverage the local funds that we do have. But as Al mentioned, even the county is hurting drastically for road improvements. So what you're going to see is a county road commission shortage. So what you're going to see is a degradation of our street system, our major street system, for a number of years. We've made a decision with the governing body to essentially go from what's called a good road condition to a fair road condition. And Al knows the distinction. You'll notice it in terms of rideability, in terms of potholes, in terms of the curb appeal that Al had also mentioned. And in tandem with that, because of our reduced revenue stream, I'm laying off about one-third of our full-time personnel. I'm already about 20, I've already laid off about 22, 23 percent of our full-time personnel. Many of them are in the public works departments that in the wintertime plowed our snow. That's one reason why our snow protocol went from plowing all of our streets to dry pavement within 24 hours. Now it's what, three days, Mark? Four. Four days. Four days. Four days. And again, in the olden days when we had funds, we would actually complement our workforce with the private sector that charged about $140 an hour on average to help plow our snow. And so it would cost about between $50,000 and $60,000 every time it snowed, over and above our standard personnel costs that we had in-house. So unfortunately, until things change, you're going to see a degradation of our major street system for the major streets as well as maintenance of those streets in terms of pothole patching and snow removal. John, it might be wise also to mention that coming up the next snow season, we are giving back to the County Road Commission snow and ice control because for the past approximately nine years, we've been maintaining those county major roads. And their level of service is even less than what we had the past snow and ice season. Now, they had been, we had a contract with the County Road Commission to where they paid us to do the roads, but it never completely covered the amount that was there and the extra amount was taken out of the general fund. We no longer have those funds available to do that. And so we made a decision that since they were county roads and they are their responsibility, that 
they need to be taking care of those and uh, covering that expense and it shouldn't be coming out of the um, general taxpayer mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. within within Troy but that does cause a problem for all of you and for all of us uh, that's why I asked about what other types of things that are being done countywide and statewide because that's really where this needs to be addressed. Well, you know, the one thing that you hear a lot about is the, uh, well, we've got to change the, the uh, reallocation, the federal reallocation. It's 92% of all the money from Michigan goes to feds, or you get 92 cents back. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, if it goes to 95%, which would be monumental, because this is up against all the other states to get that kind of shit, right? So to get to 95%, the Road Commission explained to me and, and one of the things I learned is, by the way, when the federal money comes into the state, goes to the state, the state keeps 75% of it, tram dot, and 25% gets distributed to all the counties in the state. So think of that. So that 3%, you know, you're down to 25% for every, all of the counties. Uh, and basically all it'll do is one half mile road. Mm -hmm. See, so people will tell you, and this, I'm just sharing this with you elected officials, because I'm perfect to say, well, get more money from the federal government. That is monumental and of no real consequence. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's really the county and the state. Yes, Councilman Howard? No, I think the other, the other side of that equation is how you allocate those resources. And I actually take great exception to the way um, resources are allocated. Say, if you look at Troy, for example, instead, you know, and if we could, and you take the same amount of money and you, and you actually allocate it instead of to expanding roads, you know, like in, in the mid 2000s, the next 10 years we're going to be expanding to Quinder, Livernois, we're going to be expanding Rochester again, we're going to be expanding Chahar, and yet you, you aren't maintaining what you already have. I think the priority should be in maintaining what you have before you even consider expanding. And when you have a road expansion project, you actually need to do a proper cost benefit analysis, and those aren't done, okay? And you have that all across the state. Likewise, we have a metropolitan region whose area cannot be supported by its population or its economic base. So we need to do what other states do and, and ban the expansion of the metropolitan area unless it can actually pay for itself. Because what we're doing, in Oakland County even, is through the Road Commission, we're subsidizing the outlying parts of the county. Whereas the population and the economic base are still down here but we're penalized because we actually have cities here, and there's the assumption that the city is going to backfill where the county is actually lax or where the road commission is lax. Well, I don't get involved in the allocation of dollars, but I was on the SEMCOG board for a while, and I would suggest that, uh, you, that the council members get engaged with, in, we are. with SEMCOG because we are they, they have a big influence. If, that, if that's the case, you know, that's where the, kind of the federal, you get the last calls, you know, in terms of how the money gets used. Uh, but uh, the two billion, by the way, has nothing to do with expansion. That shortfall is only to maintain existing right. road structures, you know, improve them for safety. This uh, Thursday, the SEMCOC um, mm -hmm. General Assembly meeting is in Troy at the Michigan State mm -hmm. Management Center, and uh, many of us will be there. And I, th one of the yeah, I areas is transportation. Yeah. I'm sure yeah. Yeah. there are subcommittees oh, yeah. as well as there are other. But it is something that I'm sure is impacting all communities. Right. Right. as well as in Troy. Is there another area that you folks want to talk about in addition to roads? Because I don't I want do. us just to spend on well, that. So What I would like to say is it seems like everybody has accepted the status quo that you've mm -hmm. got reduced revenues and you have to lay off people. How about the fact that we? I thought this meeting was going to be about marketing the city of Troy. Let's try to fill these buildings. Let's bring businesses here. That brings tax revenue and all your problems yep. go away. Okay? Right instead of talking about how bad you have it and how terrible things are talk about put on your best face and i talked to you about this john trim the trees plant some flowers looks good i've been looking at in my island in front of my business a tree that's been knocked over for two months a gas line marker that's been knocked over and a tree that was totally taken down to me that's unacceptable okay Let's do something to market this city. We've got great people that work here, highly educated workforce. We've got a ton of empty buildings. We've got to come up with something creative 
to, to backfill them and, and do something, and your problems are going to go away. You're going to have the money. You know what? You get, when, when you're down, you have to reinvent. That's what all businesses do. You know what? We didn't stop R&D when our sales went down. We increased R&D. We came up with new products. We got out of our comfort zone, and that's what you have to do, right? Absolutely. So that's what we need to talk about. Mm -hmm. Dave, list. Um What I'm hearing to, here today is a lot of what I'm hearing everywhere I go is we have a communication issue, and we're trying to address that. Uh, we talked about marketing at the last council meeting. I hear from the, the five, five here today, we didn't communicate very well with you about our change in plowing. Mm -hmm. uh, I, it appears to me that, that nobody here even knew that we, we had changed our policy. We're doing a terrible job of communicating. We need to fix that and we need to fix marketing. And I agree, that's probably the most important thing that we need to do today. We can talk about the big picture and the roads and all that, but we need to fix the problem that we have with our image and communication. And that's what we need to do today, to talk about that, in my opinion. Well, if the question we, I have is, what, what is the image that Troy wants to portray? I mean, are they, are they, what are they looking to be? I know two years ago someone said we're going to develop this little area called like the medical area of Troy or something. I think it's a couple of miles northeast of where we were located or something like that. And what, what is that vision? Is that vision is, I mean, are, we've spent, you know, about a half hour talking about the roads. And is our vision we want to have the best roads in the, in the state of Michigan? Is our, what, what, is, what, is our, what is our true vision, you know, and what, what is like the goal, you know, how are we going about going through If that? you'll go in your agenda, there is the vision and goal statement that council developed. Um, the other side, there it is. It's all right there. And I should tell you that last night we did vote to go out for RFP uh, on doing communication, but it's more than that. It's also economic development because it's all tied in together. And uh, so I think that it's important for all of us to be working together on that in order to promote uh, Troy for families as well as businessmen, businesses as Councilman Slater so wisely said yesterday evening. It's a combination effort. It's not just the residents or just the businesses. It's all of us together. And so um, we are uh, working on that. Um, and that's going to be forthcoming when John agreed last night to go out for uh, well, it will bids. take about three months to get someone on board. Right. So months. looking at the fourth fourth goal, attract and retain a business mm -hmm. investment. Mm -hmm. Is there anything specific that, that um, you guys can kind of extrapolate on? Well, I'm Mark Miller and I'm really involved in the economic development for the city. And we're, we've sort of had a, a, a couple different things occur at one time. We've had a change in administration in Lansing and, and at the same time, we've had an employee, um, our economic development specialist who is in charge of day-to-day -day activities going to businesses, leave the city and go to another job. So what's happening from at MEDC, which is the Michigan Ec Economic Development Corporation, they're changing the way in which economic development will occur. We don't know exactly what that will be, but now it's more of top-down where their employees are going. What they're going to do is switch that to more bottom-up where the city is going to be more responsible in developing what those deals will be. In. And um, so we took a, that opportunity to take a look at how we're doing economic development. And there's this um, process or philosophy activity that was developed called economic gardening, which says, well, let's not go out there and try to get all the, just everyone goes after the big businesses. It's like elephant hunting. And all, you know, Alan, you can say that we are, everyone's going after the same big businesses. Right. And sometimes uh, we're fighting with Rochester Hills. And they're very costly. It's right, <laughs> right, and, and you lose. So what we're doing, this economic gardening is different in the sense that we target and identify the, the tier two businesses, which are the highest growth businesses from 10 employees to 99. And then work with and create collaborative efforts to garden and help those businesses grow. Well, when we say help those businesses grow, we don't do things for them. We set up these collaborative arrangements. And one thing we've already looked into is Walsh College has the, um, the um, um, 
Institutes and Walsh Institute in which they're already doing economic gardening. So what we're going to do is start playing that and working together. And when we met with um, Stephanie Bergeron, we didn't know it. And she says, well, we have a problem. You should have known that we're already doing this. So what we're going to do is we're going to start targeting those smaller tier two businesses and help them um, succeed. In other words, make businesses succeed or help them succeed that are already here. And that's what we're, we're embarking on that effort right now. Um, I actually did a list of things. And I'll just run through it if I can. Shut up. But uh, I, I think the message is fine, needs to be a little different in that aside from the economic, it's just not an economic uh, business development person. Uh, the, the, I would advocate that, that you need to find a way to find a serious budget for a campaign. This is more than just uh, you know having somebody doing you know, it. And I've had great success here within the city bringing jobs by working with your administration. So you don't really have a problem there. I think you get very good signals nowadays to, with employers, in my opinion. But, but there's this outreach. You have to get to the people that, aside from the small businesses, which I absolutely think is a home run opportunity, uh, but you have to get a campaign to know that you're the go-to city. If, if somebody around the country or around the world is going to come to southeast Michigan, there's got to be Troy they've heard about. And one of my points is you should pick up on pure Michigan. That, that's just an astounding program. So, but anyways, I, I feel that... He did get us on their, on there. On their oh, yeah? website. Yeah. yeah, great. And now, well, yes, they said, now that we're on there, other businesses can all connect through the city. Correct. Great, great. Uh, but and, you, of you course, know, we have Automation Alley, which is... Oh, yeah, well, that's another AI asset AI for you. I know that, right? Okay. You've got, you got a core asset there. So you got, you know, a campaign to market yourself. You've got a campaign of appreciation to the employers that are here. You have to have a campaign... Uh, that ask for referrals. Talk about Robert. If you inter got international exposure, Nancy. What, come on, give us some businesses that you do business with that we could call on. I'll tell you right well, now. I have a customer we've dealt with for 30 years. Um, he's headquartered in uh, Canada. He put a sales and engineering force right on Bellingham. I, I don't know which building mm -hmm. he's in. You guys should be going to Canada because go. right now the Canadian dollar is at a disadvantage to Canadian customers. Right. They need a presence right. in the United States. They're yeah. buying up plants over here yep. right. to manufacture. And they're not going to Mexico as frequently right. as they did. Yeah. So yeah. The now is the time really with right these now. tier ones and tier twos to attract them here. And I don't know, Tom, if you're dealing with them, but um, that's that's the vibe I'm, I'm getting from... Um, from these, from my customers, in, in one company. Uh, a couple other things, uh, for example, the car show or a foreign national association conventions. I say, hey, do you have a booth there? Do you have? You know, start start thinking like private sector businesses. You're out. You're there. You, you know, you reach out. You participate mm -hmm. in the, the Chinese association, the, the Greater Detroit Chinese Association, and whatever. They all apply. Uh, you know, take, evaluate your benefits, and you have a good history of transition here. I sincerely believe that. And, you know, and so you've got to make the case, you know, point the differentials and then say, okay, try us and we'll show you that what we say is real. Uh, you know, continue to adopt policies and actions that promote the quality of life. One of the things that I think is imperative, and this is for the council, is that you have to get a quality of life for your citizens. You've got to have the public safety and welfare, which, by the way, on roads, not cutting the... The ditches is a safety factor, in my opinion, and the grass. And, uh, but you also have to think about the business environment, you know, talking about bringing people in from other parts of the world. It, and it is a problem, and I'm not in a manufacturing business, but you hear all the time about people can't get, people don't want to transfer here. And this is an impediment to, I think, our growth. So you have to be thinking about what can you do to support and engage in things that create a quality of life. You need what I refer to as an after five environment. Mm -hmm. and, and frankly, that's what's killing downtown Detroit, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. There's nobody there after five, and businesses can't survive. Uh, the, uh, uh, I had a little, just, just a thought, like, for example, the campaign of appreciation. Make sure that it really goes out there. For example, I made this little thing up. Like, we love your community contributions, jobs. Thank you. I don't know. I'm not saying you use that, but I mean, you got a campaign of outreach. Um, and 
meet your government very good. And one thing that I think is going well here, but I, I know it is so far, but there's always the challenge that, that uh, I've experienced this in other states where there's kind of like an account exec. Somebody within the city hall is assigned to that prospect. And they are the go-to person that can really part the water. So it has some influence and intensity stays with that client. It's that account exec. So if it's a little blip with the DPW or with the council member or whatever, there's somebody kind of helping and coaching through, you know, through the process. The, other, the last kind that I have is uh, two things. Campaign to upgrade properties, a recognition both in the residents and the commercial properties, because you are now transitioning into serious, you know, serious negative influences on parts of the city. Uh, and then the other thing is infrastructure is, don't forget about the airport. I mean, you know, that's kind of a neglected asset mm -hmm. in a better airport. Not that you're going to make it to a Pont a Pontiac, Oakland, or any of that. But if I were on the council and if we had the money, you'd be seeing me advocating money for a, a plan. I'd get with Brooks and say, okay, Dave Vanderveen, all right, come on, let's get a vision here. You know, let's get a vision. Where are we going? What, what's this airport going to be 20 years from now? Uh, I do think that that's an area too where we could get Automation Alley to advocate mm -hmm. for us at sure. the airport because of course they want, they're advocating companies coming right. not only right. here to Troy but into right. all the, the counties that they're uh, located okay. in. And one of the ways that people travel, of course, the quickest is, is through um, right. air travel. Exactly. Um, so I think that that is an important thing to um, to work on. I know. It, it, they, I think the hard part for all of us is that we did so well for so many years mm -hmm. and that we had disbelief this was actually happening. And then, of course, knowing that actually now that the recession is supposed to be over but it's not actually going to return to the uh, levels that it was till at least four years uh, according to articles uh, that I've read uh, people are grasping at what can they do but I think Nancy's on the right track the fact that you have to accentuate what we have that's positive and we have really a lot of wonderful things going on within mm -hmm. Troy with the businesses that we already had with the residents, certainly with the school systems, even though mm -hmm. they've had to cut back too, they still are head and shoulders above a lot of other areas. That's right. Mm -hmm. And so that's why it's important to uh, get that word out there even more so. Um, what are you all hearing? You mentioned about a business that you're dealing with that you're hearing things mm -hmm. on. Can you relate anything that you're hearing from your customers about the area or about things that they'd like to say or whatever? Bob? Well, I was going to say that we have something that maybe a lot of people aren't aware of. We've become a low-cost country. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. And I'm taking advantage of that right now. Uh, working for a German company, mm -hmm. I run the North American operations. And uh, uh, I have brought 60% of our manufacturing from Germany over to the U.S. now. And most of that's in Oakland and Macomb County, a little bit in Windsor, uh, that we use uh, different shops. And uh, uh, I think if there's other foreign companies here, they should maybe be more aware of the opportunities that, that could bring because shipping cost, uh, the euro, uh, it's just off the map. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, and uh, and we're really taking advantage of that, and that's why we've had a huge business growth in our company here in the U.S. See, that'd be something interesting to put into a campaign to right. remind yes. people no. come on, meet some of our business community leaders that what they're how they're benefiting. Right, the Mayor. We had uh, you and Mr. Patterson at my open house yes. two years ago. Right, I'm having another one this year, and I'll invite the council okay. come over and see what we do. They're they're very interesting, large pieces of equipment, uh -huh. and my floor is just going to be packed. Okay, but uh, uh, that was my that was my whole campaign around that. That, that particular open house is that uh, uh, that we're bringing manufacturing back to Michigan and, and uh, I believe the governor is going to come and visit us too because uh, I think that's something we're not we're not taking advantage of right now and, and uh, especially there's a lot of foreign uh, companies here 
And uh, if they were to be aware of what they can do and break the old habits that they have, uh, that you can only build something in Germany or Italy or wherever it might be, um, that we have the talent here in the U.S. and especially in Michigan. Mm -hmm. Right. I thought, yes, mm -hmm. Councilman Fleming, I saw you saying the link. Yeah, I think we're on to something here. You're, you're excellent business people. And if I'm a business person coming in from the outside, it's one thing to talk to an economic development person or to a, a mayor or city council, but to really have an opportunity to meet with business people who are living it, dealing it, and can be honest about it, I think that that's critical. So when we're talking about marketing, Troy, we really need to include you business people as advocates and right. have a forum so when we have an opportunity to bring in a business and Mark's working on that or whoever's in economic development, we need to have a format so that they can meet the business people sure. right. and let you tell them, okay? Because they, they want to talk with business people who have been successful. And when you say you were a low-cost manufacturer now, that's key because when a business person comes <coughs> looking at cost, okay? Mm -hmm. So compared to other countries, I think that the tables are turning a little bit. We need to capitalize on that. Troy has a talent. We have the engineers. We have the software. But we just need, and if we can attract the businesses here, then we will get the residents, okay? So this campaign we're talking about, we need to include a, a, a group of business people that are available to meet with, with clients that are coming in or prospective businesses that are coming in mm -hmm. and really talk about the key points. And we need to have those talking points and be consistent with it in our brochures or whatever, but you guys are reiterating as well. I think that'll go a long ways to attracting bits, more so than just having a council or economic development. Right. I think this is key what you're saying. Well, look, sure. It's still in its infancy, but yeah. I was talking with uh, Mark Miller and Dick Carlisle, our planning consultants, and uh, those two essentially are charged with uh, uh, trying to bring to fruition what's called economic gardening. Yes. And I spoke to them about uh, going outside the organization to essentially have a core committee, which would include uh, not a lot of people, maybe five or six. We would meet periodically and talk about what we can do to enhance Troy and bring jobs to Troy. I did mention uh, Al, I know you're super busy, but as part of that, that core group that knows about, about businesses. And uh, we plan on uh, meeting with the city council about this concept. Uh, I don't want, Mark just left, so I don't want to put words <laughs> in his mouth. But, uh, uh, you know, Mark will advise when, when he's ready to, uh, uh, to have a presentation on that concept, Good. just as you spoke. Well, John, going along with what you said, my you know, my doors are always open in in the city. Visits me from time to time, uh, asking what what they can do, and I'm going through training programs. Uh, you know, most of the people in my industry that have experience has white hair like I do, and uh, we need to bring the next generation in. And unfortunately, there wasn't a bridge in there uh, because the industry got cut off. Uh, our our U.S. car manufacturers uh, really relied on Japan to, to supply most of the machinery, and, and uh, it really killed the business. Mm -hmm. uh, things are changing right now. Uh, Japan's got their problems, and and uh, and we, we have ours. But fortunately, ours is making it more attractive to do work here. So it's. Yeah. Uh, but I'd be more than glad to uh, talk to anybody that is seeking a location here. And, well, right, I'm showing them, showing them what I'm doing, uh, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent. But when I listen to your, your comments, I mean, it just strikes me. I mean, at Columbia Center, we have some major international consulting firms. Sure, you know, and they have some, uh, you know, networking. You know, where the council's there, you know, and the leadership and you know, administration and some business people advocating, and you meet these people, and s send that message and say, you know, when you're dealing with firms don't forget about us here in Troy let's talk to them you know let's talk to them you know that's kind of what business does and uh, well you know it sounds exactly like what the chamber was doing for years and years and I'm wondering I know Nancy you were well, president of mm -hmm. are they still doing that type of thing I haven't been on the board several years at least but um, they're they're constantly um, trying to embrace um, businesses to um, uh, get involved in different committees, get involved in different events, um, not just stay in their little niche. So, And I know they do purposely try to get a, a well-diverse board 
from mm -hmm. all different industries. You know, it's not just all attorneys or all engineers. But I mean, they're reaching out to oh, others. Oh, they that do, they because you know what? They have collaborations with different chambers and with different groups. I know Macomb Community College has industrial management, and they, uh, they do have some good programs. So we have to go outside of Vulcan County. We have to go to Macomb and... and um, we are also. Yeah, do, go, go and get involved in these programs, offer the internships and whatnot. ITT Tech um, has some good programs. I've hired young people from that, from that school also. They have an excellent um, job placement. Uh, to work with their alumni and their current um, uh, students. So um, offering internships, that's another good thing. And you have to, you have to show the, the credibility in like the machine tool business, okay? I've always said that my machinists can make as much as an engineer or more. Mm -hmm. My service techs make more than I do because they're on the road all the time. They get paid seven days a week. I mean, these guys are, are golden. Um, but um, you have to talk about your business. You have to talk about uh, it's. You know what? I get excited about it. I'm a woman. I'm in. I'm in tooling. I mean, <laughs> this is an oddity. I'm supposed to make coffee and answer the phone. Okay. Um, uh, but I do get excited about this business, and I get excited that it's coming back. I do too. Chinese manufacturing is not the answer. Okay. Right. Um, offshoring design is not the answer because when it comes back, what do we have to do? We have to fix it. it. Yeah. Okay. I think, I think Councilwoman McGinnis, you signaled you wanted to say I did, something. I was just, as I'm listening to everything, I think, well, first of all, I wanted to point out that there is something, a program similar to what, what we're kind of talking about in Rochester Hills, and I know that we talked about it in terms of something that's set up in conjunction with a business roundtable, but they also have something that's set up. Um, to welcome new companies or companies that are looking at coming to Rochester Hills where the mayor and of course it's a different form of government so the logistics work out a little bit differently but he has people that he can call on that he thinks would be a good fit for whatever business he could potentially be courting and they can interact in something that's social. I think the key thing that I'm hearing though is something that we've been talking about in terms of coming up with strategies so it's not going to be one easy fix and I've been on the council for less than two years so I don't have as much of the institution institutional knowledge but what I can tell is that there was a time where every entity was capable of standing alone so people weren't necessarily forced to work together even within the city we had the departments that were capable of getting the job done on their own with the members of their department and community fairs could be a really good example in terms of having four or five, six people that are in that department and they know specifically what their responsibilities are and you know specifically who to call within that department to get it done. Well, the departments have shifted. Some of them are non-existent. All of them are much smaller. So we're working, I think, on that transition between um, having these standalone groups that are in the city um, outside organizations and, and within the city staff to cross training, which I know we've talked about and it's a lot easier said than done, but I think that that's the ultimate goal. And what we're talking about in addition to that being the ultimate goal where there's partnerships that we really haven't had to explore before and that we really haven't been you know, forced to make a priority, but I think that's what we need to do. It needs to be a whole laundry list of things that we're setting up, whether it's interactions with the businesses, interactions between the different departments, interactions where city council members need to be a lot more involved, I think, in that community outreach, and what we've been talking about at the last couple of meetings specifically, which would be community, um, not community affairs, but communication, PR, and marketing. And you made a statement about needing to decide we're gonna dedicate a budget to this. No. Well. That's a touchy subject right now. You know, it's a touchy subject because we want to build quality of life because we want people to come here. Um, I grew up here, so I've lived my whole life, and that's, that's why I ended up coming back after school. I had family, but I think for young people, it's very important that they have quality of life. So we're trying to maintain that. We're trying to maintain our infrastructure, which we talk about all the time, being very important. We are trying to maintain public safety. 
um, and making sure that our businesses and our residents feel safe. And at the same time, we're trying to reach out to people in ways that we have it. So that budget issue is really, I know no one wants to hear it as an excuse, but it is really something that we struggle with. So I think in order to make it work and get the people to come in to get the, the money flowing in, we really have to kind of focus on these new ways to partner. And so I think it needs to be a combination of getting businesses to come in and do exactly what you're talking about, having council out there and the face of the community and then having our staff interact in, in different ways um, so we can get it done and, and hopefully come up with a way to work on that marketing piece within our budget. I think we're getting there. You know, I think we're definitely getting there and um, I, I don't think it'll be too late, but it's been something that we're kind of struggling with figuring out exactly how we can budget to do all those things. I think if you partner with the chamber, you've got 700 plus um, companies there and members. Um, when I was on the board, every new member was got a welcome call from a board member, okay? And it didn't matter what kind of business. Um, and so they knew one person, at least, that with a phone number that they could call if they had a question. And we made a point to invite them. Okay, let me take you to the Women's Business Forum. Let me take you to the, the HR group or whatever and get them rolling, get them introduced to a few people. That's easy, that's volunteering. That doesn't cost you anything in your budget. I think if you reached out to people in the community, especially the chamber, they'd be more than willing because that's gonna bring them more chamber members anyways. Okay, um, it, it's a win-win, and it doesn't take much time or much effort. The only, the only thing I think it, I caution is that uh, I, I'm not surprised to hear you know your comments and um, Nancy's, but you need a plan. You you know, mm -hmm. uh, is the status quo acceptable, or where do you want to be when you grow up, so to speak? You know, mm -hmm. or when you can afford to write the checks. Uh, but and then there's a transition to it. But you, I think you got to. Do the plan. You gotta do the plan, have a commitment to a long term strategy. And the only other thing is is that there's light years of difference and I listen, I, I absolutely appreciate the chamber and work with them and all the things Nancy says is are right on. But you know, there's nothing like the city the administration going to a meeting, which I've had John and Mark go. You go to somebody's office. I mean, that stuff is light years value. Same thing with council members. I mean, this is not just up to John, and you know, I'm not picking on or protecting anybody here. I just don't feel it's up to John and uh, Mark or, or Lori or, or Cindy. Uh, everybody needs to be present. You need to be part of that connection. Just like you say, a board member calls a new member. I mean, it, it's the city. You are the city. You are the leaders. You are the ones who control it. So all due respect to the chamber, they're, they're a side a peripheral association. I think the one thing that's not getting touched on is the next step, I and mean, as, as you guys are growing, as we're growing, retention's a huge issue. I mean, I can tell mm -hmm. you, we have offices in China and India, we have, we do a lot of work down south. I can recruit any guy to go to China, India, to any of our offices, down, or not offices, but any of our locations down south for a customer, but I struggle to get a good guy to stay in Troy. I'm not talking about somebody that's, you know, 45, 56. I'm talking about somebody that's 23, 24, okay. fresh out of college. And I have, well, can't sell him on a lot because yeah. he comes to me and he says, well, I can't really afford a car, but I need to have a car in machine. That's obviously true. Well, we yes. have, regardless of what people say, we have zero public transit. Mm -hmm. uh, you can call the bus that drives by public transit, but I'd rather go on a horse and buggy ride. So, I mean, we, we don't have that. So we don't have that pure downtown life. As you said, we have mm -hmm. nothing after five in Detroit. Yep. You can probably count on your hand the amount of 20-year-olds that probably live in downtown Detroit. Um, we have a two-block radius in downtown that people go to from Comerica Park to Ford Field, and that's it. The cities, you know, you got Troy, you got Birmingham, you got Rochester, Sterling Heights, I guess those are probably the four closest cities to each other from Troy. They need to work together to develop that retention program. One city's not going to do it because they need to piggyback off each other, especially with budgeting the way it is, especially with the economy the way it is, because at the end of the day, you're going to, the city of Troy, the city of Rochester, is all going to get to a point where all these corporations that are growing are realizing, guess what, if I can't bring people here, i got to move. Mm -hmm. Because if I can't retain 23 and 24, if I struggle where some guy calls me and says, I want to work, but can I, take your, can I work in India when the guy has, knows nothing about India or China? That scares the heck out of me that I can't get a guy that lives 15 minutes away to want to work for me in Troy. Well, that was one of the things that was addressed very strongly in the Futures 2020 vision 
which our citizens worked on. But then again, we ran into this 2008 with the economy. There was not the funds to put into the yeah. kinds of things that were going to attract the young people or keep the young people here. And then uh, uh, the whole situation, you know, with Michigan in, in general. Now things look like they're starting to turn around somewhat. But yes, we do need to work with the other communities uh, on uh, marketing, uh, having people want to be here. Actually, it's a good time to buy a house here. The young, speaking of young people, they should be buying it now because the it's only going to grow. 324 today. The yeah. 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 You can't own a house because right. college is astronomically high. Sure. Right. So you're in debt up to your ears. And you'll probably pay it back by the time you're 50. So you have bad credit going on. You, 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 you can't get a car because leasing options are finally starting to come back to a small degree. But there's no 23 or 24 that has twenty thousand dollars saved. I mean, they're minus 50 probably by the time they're done with college. And, th and on top of that, they know that they want to be something in this world. They can't just stop at a four-year degree. They got to go get a master's. Mm -hmm. They may even have to get a PhD depending on what they're in. Where's the, the, you know the pile of debt goes one way, but the pile of revenue, the pile of saving goes nowhere. Right, right. You know. Yes. Uh, American Kerwin, next? Oh, no, no, go ahead. Sorry. I think Nancy nail on the head. I, I think in the short term, we need to increase revenue in, in Troy by attracting right. businesses. Right. I mean, there's a lot of other issues we right. have to resolve regionally. Right. It's a quick right. fix, but let's get some businesses here. So we had a decision. We, that, uh, you, you mentioned yeah. it. And we're a software company developing software and engineering services. And But 10 years ago, we developed some patents. Mm -hmm. <laughs> To do strangely, to do, to do uh, LED light replacement. Right. And it happens to be we did it many years ago, so it's foundational. It's very, very good patent. And so we were doing and LED light bulbs, uh, you know, as a replacement for fluorescent light bulbs are still not there. It's still so expensive. So we've been doing research um, and doing some manufacturing in in uh, um, in China to actually do that. And, we're, and it scares the heck out of us because. The technology, the IP can be taken, and, and, it, and we're out of control of that. So we made a decision to move the manufacturing here to, to North America, and we decided to try and either do it in, and we were, it was a very hard decision not to move to Canada because they were offering us some really good incentives. But the state of Michigan came through, and we, we just bought 130,000 square foot, one of these open buildings, right, mm -hmm. in, in Dusko. Very good deal. Do you need high crane height? <laughs> Maybe. So, so extremely. So so that. No, so that's even the problem <laughs> with the existing stuff. You can't not get. High, no, I don't it's not that. high enough, and no, there's I not enough left. You need 480 coming in. But right. okay. But the 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 the, uh, the value that you're getting sure. in these open buildings are amazing. I mean, uh, we're able to get a building. I don't even want to say what we got it for, but it, right. you know, but it's like you. Buying houses, maybe you can't buy houses, but you can certainly buy these buildings, and there's a lot of them available. And so this marketing campaign to be able to attract businesses to a very attractive price uh, uh, resident, you know, price point, price point is wonderful. And and so we we did that. I mean, we just bought it in the last year, and we're going to be uh, eventually manufacturing LED light bulbs in in the city of Troy, and and. So, I mean, that's a very good selling point for Troy. With that everything else that Troy has, has yes. with everything else that Troy has in really good, inexpensive there. buildings, we should, and, and I'd be willing to, Altair would be willing to um, meet with businesses coming in for okay. the same okay. thing. I was just going to say, I mean, you've got a group here of various types of industries. Right. Uh, use us. Uh, okay. Just think about a company, okay, come to Troy, we got a library, all this stuff. They don't care. I don't care. Okay? That's not true. Well, okay. It's not, not, not true. But that's, true. that's not true. Okay. You, you said that last time we met too. And and this quality of so so good business, you know, roads. Well, it's okay if you live here, but if you're creating a, a business, a lot of our people do yeah. live here. But if you're creating a business, okay, and 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 you're a, you're, you're coming from a foreign country, you're coming from another state, uh, especially foreign companies. They're used to be uh, most of them are used to being vertically integrated. They do everything. That's not necessarily the way to do things. Uh, I run my business as a supplier-based company. So where do you get things done? People like us can 
can advise people. You can go here for this type of work. You can go here for this type of work. Pick up one of these good deal buildings in in, in Troy, and you can establish a business quickly with fewer people. Maybe mm -hmm. in some cases, and less capital outlay. Yeah, absolutely. And and so you're not going to fill it up right. with machine tools. Uh, uh, that doesn't help me. But uh, you know, I'm more after the yeah. the caterpillars and people like that. But uh, 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 we know we know where to get things done, and who to go to to get them done. And you know, unless it's a direct competitor, I wouldn't mind helping somebody. And it's actually what we, exactly what we promote to when customers yeah. come with us and say, you know, we're looking to expand or retrofit or something. Our engineering division is like, you know what, there's plenty of builds. We'll, we'll, you know, fit it to your specs. I mean, don't spend the money on doing it from the site up. You're just two times the cost, three times right. the time. So, I mean, it's something that other cities, you know, different states are doing. And it's something that I think the city of Troy can definitely do. It kind of in response, Madam Mayor, to, to Neil's original point and, and to some things that have been said on the other side, we do have as part of our master land use plan that regional look. Mm -hmm. We also know what attracts young people and we know how to do the new economy. What we did fall into with was this glitch, but there are some things that we can't control. Sure. So we have the vision and we do have the plan, Neil. Mm -hmm. What we need though is the structure. And that's something that we as a council haven't agreed on placing an investment in the structure. However, we do recognize that communication is a priority, and that's why just last night, seems like yesterday, <laughs> just like last, last night, we did choose to make an investment, and, and that's difficult. The one thing that I think, John, if I may, that we need is bigger. We need to move rapidly and quickly. Um, the mayor was a absolutely right. We were back on our heels, kind of like, what happened? To, wh who took my town? <laughs> But we need bigger on this. We do, as the businesses say, want to be involved as a council. We do want to make some of those outreach. But we're not approaching her tree, her, her gas line, that curb appeal that he talks about with bigger. And in order to do that, we need the structure. And in part, that is an investment. And that's something that, again, you know what the what is. It's the how that needs to be worked out. I know that you're, you're working with limited staff right now who are under a great deal of strain. But we, what we need to do is get out of that. We've got to get our energy back. We've got to get out there. We've got to do the things that they said. Meet people, greet people, mm -hmm. share the good mm -hmm. news, share that story. And so you, in your position, handling all of that transition piece and then getting that energy to go out and share is, is crucial. I think some of the pieces that Council Member Fleming mentioned were even if we had, and I know when we had the communications piece come back, and uh, Cindy Stewart has made this before, but even uh, since so many people now are looking at the internet for pieces, mm -hmm. where we have just a right. few shots where you're speaking right. and you're speaking and you're speaking. We don't have to literally take mm -hmm. you out of what you're doing, but that interactive piece, which we've done out of um, Sharp, Smart, or whatever that little uh, uh, group is out of. Uh, you mean the videos? The videos that we've done. Our online right. videos. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe so th those we should move that up. Uh, there you go, Neil. I knew you would come up with it. Sharp, smart, and smart. I know it sounds like, but they they really access that in a point of connecting potential businesses with other groups, and that's just a quick little little hit. But a lot of again, your your generation, younger folks looking for happening places. We can't address right now our after five issue, but we can regionally. There are things happening, as you say, nearby, and we need to be able to work together. Mm -hmm. That's part of the new economy. Right, and, that, and that's a great point. Like Things like Troy Restaurant Week, which I think when I was your last time, it's a great thing, but if you promote it to people in Rochester, Sterling Heights, and you guys, let's say there's a Rochester Restaurant Week, I'm not sure. I mean, they did. If, you can, if, you can, if you can take all these four or five cities and start marketing it to each other, it's free marketing, right? You, you can go to the city of Rochester and say, you know what, from July 3rd through 15th, we're having a Rochester Week. Can you just get it out to your public? People will come. Like, I mean, my wife and I live in Birmingham, but you were just saying Royal Oak, Rochester. We found out about it. We're like, you know, let's go. There's great deals on good restaurants that we generally may not try. It, 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 that's not like, and I understand there's a huge budget. I, I, obviously, I'm, I'm in the business industry. We understand managing costs. We understand what happened in 2008. But we, we also understand what can we do, theoretically, what we view it as what can we do for free to grow our business? And that, that's what I was saying by piggybacking off the other cities. I understand we're not going to get a public transit system for these four cities. That, uh, that's a, a wish list down the road. I'm not crazy enough to assume let's get that done in five years. But I think there's other things that working together with the cities, Restaurant Week's one example. I'm sure there's you know five or six that the city of Troy's come up with on their own that they could piggyback with. 
you know, those things will really increase foot traffic. Those things will really get going because you can you can build yourself up as you know a, a great place just to eat. And you know, unfortunately, I graduated from college longer longer ago than I want to imagine. But I know, like you know, my cousin that just graduated from college, she's 22. They're looking for things like that. They're, they they have a limited budget, but if they can get to a, a twenty dollar a meal restaurant, get it for ten bucks. Guess what? They're gonna want to go. We have, we have kids that age, so we mm -hmm. we do we do get it. Right. Cindy, is there a way to move that video part up on the, you know, because it's down there? And maybe well, we're working on our, our brand new one's gonna be launched. Okay, but is it gonna be up higher on the screen? Yes. Well, a whole new design of the okay. home page is being worked on. All right. Okay. That would, that would be something uh, you know, specific. One, on an interim, on the, on, the, on the shorter term perspective, uh, you know, when you think about, like you say, what you can do for n close to nothing, think about, uh, you got to backfill these properties, you know, because you got a serious problem going here. Mm -hmm. And I know, it, we all know that. And, uh, but it's a, it's a, you know, to the citizens that are listening, they're living in a house here and working somewhere else, but it's a threat to your city. Mm -hmm. It is an absolute threat to your city. Don't think, I mean, don't think that the problem in some form can't be what Detroit has for you. You know, that's reality in my mind. And uh, your interim efforts, I would be considering on those outreaches that help get, get the backflow. Mm -hmm. Get to get these properties. And by the way, one of the ex prime examples is the reuse. If somebody's, if you have a client and the client wants to come into town, What's critical to that, important, and that St. Neil's got somebody's recommending to buy a building, and we go through the same thing. And there should be a meeting with the city management, with Mark or, or you know, or somebody, uh, John, and uh, maybe a council member, depending on the interest or magnitude, and say, look, you got an old building, and, and we know it's there, and they say, well, I need to do this, that, and the other thing. You have to send a message it can do. It is not, well, we have an ordinance, and well, you got, well, we're going to work. And I'm really serious about this. This is something that you leaders have to think about when you're in a planning commission or in the council. You have to make a vote. You have to decide. Is it, you, you got you to get out of your mind that this is a recycling world you're in. You're in a reinvestment into your community, and you got to forget about the greenfield per design parameters. You got to make things work with that are reasonable. You know, whether it's a site, right. and that signal, right? If you get a client and you bring them into City Hall here, they need to get a good, strong signal that, hey, we'll work with you on that building. I mean, we're obviously going to take care of public safety and welfare, but we're going to work with you. And that'll make the difference. Because if you and don't, we have, you're going to lose all aspects. Work with us. We yeah, have. Yeah, actually, yeah. when we were looking for buildings in Troy, and, and we got a lot of help. I mean, it was right. very, it used to be that it wasn't quite so. Yeah, well, there's been a shift here. There has been a shift. And, and we got a lot of people helping us, trying to look at the different buildings right. and figure out what the right building was, and we found it was a very a, a appealing relationship. So we appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, well, we probably need to wrap up because you all have things to attend to, and we, uh, by our rules, have to do public comments. We have to allow for that mm -hmm. if, if there's and any other you Also, it is on the agenda to excuse. Yes. Uh, at this point, uh, but uh, Laurie said we have to do it at the next meeting. No, right she now. didn't see it on here. Well, I indicated it was on here. Mm -hmm. But she said you can do it today yes. or you All can right. do it. Okay. All right. Uh, I'll move to excuse uh, Councilwoman Rob Beltamini for being out of the county. Second. Moved by the chair, seconded by Councilman Fleming. Um, discussion? Madam Mayor, I just wanted to point out, since they'll just think I'm being mean, oh. but I vote no on these. I just think it should be listed here or not here and not go through the, the excuse part. Did, and did you say she's out of the county? Yes, because I got another email today saying she yeah. thought she'd be back, but she wasn't. So. Okay, the vote, uh, Mrs. Stewart? Schilling? Yes. Fleming? Yes. Howerlack? Yes. Kerwin? No. McGinnis? Yes. Slater? Yes. Motion approved. Okay. Motion passes. Motion uh, passes. Is there anyone here that wants to make a public comment at this time? Not necessary, but we do need to, by the Open Meetings Act, allow for it. Could I just say one thing? If well, you're going to go out well, Wait, we'll go back to the, after I do that. Okay. No one? Okay. Um, Nancy? If you're going to get bids for marketing or advertising, would you please just get them from Troy businesses? We, we're going to ask for them. We're hopeful uh, because of the allocation that we said up to amount that um, 
we're going to get into our businesses. We know we have um, some, some good that are very good ones within the area. But by our um, RFP process, I don't think we can restrict it just to Troy. Can no. we, Mr. Zerlein? We, we have a program, I'll probably mispronounce it, I think it's called Minton, mm -hmm. where uh, there's a, a website. Michigan National Trade Exactly. Okay. Anyone can apply. And our businesses can encourage sure. to right. sign up. It's right on our businesses to uh, submit an RFP and, and, and a statement of quality. But within Minton, like, you know, we do bids with different cities and stuff. And, right. you know, let's say we're doing a bid for City of Ypsilanti, just hypothetically. There's extra points if you're a business based in that city. So you oh, can create the criteria yourself. Well, we'd love to have a Troy business bid on this. And we bet that there okay. will be. Yeah. All right. We'll about if there's much. nothing else, uh, we'll be in adjournment. Oh, right. Mr. Maybe right. uh, again, uh, this is the second, uh, sometimes the third time I've met uh, uh, some of these folks around the table. I want to thank you again for taking time out of your day uh, to come and visit with us. And also thank you for your comments. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Randy's adjournment. Thank you. Thank you for Thank listening. You.